Now, to see why this matters, you have to appreciate what water does to motion. Airplanes cheat gravity because air is thin. Water, by comparison, is a wall. Dragon water rises violently with speed. Double your velocity and the resistance just doesn't double. It can multiply several times over. It's like trying to sprint through syrup. The ocean's fastest verified animals top out around 70 miles an hour. That's the black marlin, the sailfish. Those are drag racers of the sea. Sperm whales, some of the most powerful mammals alive, barely reach 30 miles an hour in a chase. And even the strongest ocean currents crawl along at just a few miles an hour. Now drop it a claim like 200 miles an hour into that environment. It just doesn't bend physics, it smashes it. Anything biological achieved that speed underwater, it would burn itself apart in seconds. Every law of hydrodynamics says so. And yet, this is where the story tightens its grip. Machines have done it. During the Cold War, engineers discovered a loophole called supercavitation. Instead of fighting drag, you remove the water entirely. You design a bullet-shaped nose that creates a gas bubble around the body. So most of it travels through vapor instead of liquid. With rocket propulsion, a weapon can scream through that bubble at over 200 knots, around 230 miles an hour. That's the principle behind the Russian Skoval torpedo, tested in the 1970s and refined over decades. Loud, limited in range, and almost impossible to steer, but they are very real. So 200 miles an hour underwater isn't science fiction, it's physics with rocket fuel. 